Good Talk, the home of where the talking is good. It's your boy, Cody, and the other guy, hey, Robert, here once again go. for a very short we are here. conversation. Yeah, I want to be the first one to just say happy 4th of July to everybody. <laughs> what? No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> not what we're doing <laughs> at all. It's so confusing. I was like, this is, we, Fourth we're of way past already. the 4th of July. <laughs> it's happened. It was like happy a month ago. Happy Independence Day. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. <laughs> Saw some fireworks. Uh, Speaking of fireworks, yeah. did you see the video of the family that was celebrating the 4th of July and all their fireworks? got singularly ignited no. underneath their minivan no i did not oh that's my terrifying. gosh i've got to show you this dude it looked like a war zone that's insane it was awesome one of my <laughs> favorite memories uh actually with one of my my cousins who's no longer here oh. uh I, I know that sounds so bad oh, no. especially with the story oh, they're about to tell no. one of my favorite memories with him was is we took like a like an entire bushel of bottle rockets and we just lit the bag on fire really and, and it was just like all over the like the entire bag Backyard. Like we were like trying to get on the trampoline. We we're like, ah! like it was insane, but it was, it's a good memory. It's a good it memory. A- I'm almost getting shot in the eye with a bottle rocket with my cousins. So. Mm, the good times. <laughs> you know how like certain holidays take on personas. Like we can't have Thanksgiving now without the lady doing the. Oh my! Uh, you know. The- <laughs> Well, you can't have the 4th of July. Have you seen the Back It Up Terry video? Yes, yes. <laughs> I feel like it, up, is, it has become a staple of the holiday. Like whenever it comes to 4th of July, I go right yes. to Google oh, and I so type good. in Back It Up Terry. <laughs> no, Terry, no, Terry, Back It Up Terry. Oh, it's so, so good. Funny. And then the same with Thanksgiving. I always Google that lady and it's like green. Just beans, gets you in the tomatoes, mood for the holidays. <laughs> yeah. It becomes staples of, I don't know, I really like good it. stuff. You know, I like it. I, you know, and it's kind of, you know, I know we're, we're, we're supposed to be making an announcement right now, <laughs> but I feel like this is like something we can talk about. It's just, I guess it's kind of on my heart. It's on the surface of my heart, but like the surface of your heart. there's certain things that make something the way that it is. You know what I mean? And you like, yes. you identify <laughs> okay. that day. Uh-huh. There's like associations. And when you see that, yeah, yeah. you think of that mm-hmm. and it's just something that I want to change, like the persona of the church. Like mm. when people think about the church, I want them to think good things, you know? Yeah. Like when I think about the 4th of July, before like Back It Up Terry, you know, I thought of fireworks, I thought of hot dogs, I thought of barbecue, and I thought of independence, 1776, whatever. Yeah, aliens. Aliens, Smith. yes. You think of the Sandlot, you know, <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> Today we will have our freedom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, all sorts of stuff. The same with like Thanksgiving. And I think right now when people think about the church, Like, instantly, they just go negative. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to change that. I agree. And uh, I think we've we've had, like, conversations outside of Mm -hmm. this, of course. But, yeah, man, I'm just ready. I'm tired of negative thoughts towards the church, towards people just in general. I'm just ready for, like, people to stand up and radically change the image of Christ. Yes. And radically change the image. Well, not even the image of Christ. His image is fine. His image is perfect. Right, right, right. uh, Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Let's not change the image of Christ. Let's change the image of the people that are following Christ. Let's change the image of how they see Christ through you. There you go. Maybe that's what I was trying to say. I'm tired. I I came out in the service that I did last week, and I was like, let's be more than followers of Christ. Let's be doers of Christ. (laughs) You know what I mean? The the way it's worded sounds weird. It sounds sounds bad, (laughs) but it's like, I don't know. Like If you're truly following after Christ, then surely you're doing the work of Christ too. Should be. And like that, mm. especially in John 14, like, you know, because we've been talking about the Holy Spirit so much and we're about to talk about it again tonight and it's going to be good, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But like, just before he talks about the Holy Spirit, he says, you're supposed to do the same thing that I'm doing and even more so. Mm. And so it's like, we as the church, we, we I think somehow have taken a step back Yeah, and we're just like, Jesus only, or like, just send them to Jesus. But it's like, hey, we should be bringing Jesus to yeah. them. I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm just tired of it. I'm ready for, for people to stop farting on Jesus' name. Farting on Jesus. Let's, let's make a personal commitment, mm. like all of us. All of us watching, Cody and I right here, personal commitment that we are going to be the best reflection I like of it. Jesus Christ that we can possibly be in the world today. You know, in Matthew 5, it talks about being light, and it mm-hmm. talks about being salt, and it talks about all these things. Let's, let's make it, a, and how does this come to pass? It comes to pass by making up our mind, we're going to be disciples mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ. And, you know, we have to be followers of what he told us to do. Yeah. Otherwise, we're not being disciples. We're, yeah. We need to get away from that word Christian because what does that even mean? You know, I feel like you yeah. can ask someone on the street, are you a Christian, not a Christian? And they'll just be like, yeah, but they have no right. concept yeah. of what it means or what it doesn't mean. And so I think people should look at us and be like, oh, man. 
you know, there's definitely something about them that's unique and something about them is different. And I like it. Yeah. 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 Dude. <laughs> Instead of, I don't like it. Let me yeah. run away from it as in terror. You know, I want people to flood to the as church in <laughs> as in terror. Oh, terror. I thought you said terror. I thought you were bringing it back. Terror. back terror. <laughs> no, no. As in terror. terror. But I want people to be flocking to the church. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way, well, not the only way, I don't want to say that, but one of the ways that we can help them flock to the church is if our behavior, mm -hmm. our lifestyle, uh, the way we treat others is very reflective of what we're taught in the Word of God. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we look at Christians and I'm just like, where did they get that from? Mm. What, what in God's Word gave you permission to talk like that? Mm. What in God's Word gave you permission to act like that, to be like that? You yeah. know? And I get it. We're all a work in progress. But at least when you look at me, you can see that God is working yeah. <laughs> and I'm in progress. Right. And I think that we're in progress and we're, we're, we're real about the fact that we're in progress too, you know? And I think that's another problem with the church is there's people that are pretending mm. that they got it all together. Um, yeah. They're pretending that like, or, or they're saying like, I don't need to change because I'm, I'm already perfect or whatever. Mm. I, I'm, I'm ready to, to be openly admitting like, look, we've all got our crap that we got to deal with, yeah. and, but I'm going to do the very best that I can to still reflect Jesus yeah. and lead people to him saying, I don't have it all together, but Jesus does, and he's going to help me, but he also wants to help you. Yeah, He wants to love on you, and he wants to guide you. You know, we've been talking about it on the side here, but it's like... On the side. On the side, but we got to understand that he calls you to lay down your life. Yes. He calls you to set down... That's right. ...everything else and, and pick up his cross. Yeah, and deny yourself. Deny yourself, but it's something that you have to do every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Like, Yeah, preach like on that. We've got to... Do it more than once. Yeah. We've got to stay being filled of the Holy mm. Spirit. We've got to stay being led by God. We mm. have to constantly put down these these fleshly yeah. motivations yeah. And, and, and pick up the spirit motivations. And don't let I'm in progress become an excuse for yes. terrible behavior. Yes. Like, be in progress. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm actually, the, the wrong things I did today, I'm not going to do those tomorrow yeah, yeah. because I'm making progress. Mm. I am actually growing. I'm not going to use I'm in progress or that favorite Christian shirt under construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what we're saying. I get it. But as long as that doesn't become our crutch mm. to still live erratically yeah, 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 yeah. and still not be a true follower. I, I'm under construction, but when we were building our house, and I know you and Kai built your house, when we were building it, I could see, even though it was under construction, each week it was changing yeah. and becoming more and more in that image of the blueprint of what it was supposed to be. And the Bible is our blueprint. The words of Jesus are our blueprint of yeah. how we're supposed to live. So every day and every week, I should see things of my life evolve and into like that, that image of what God said I'm supposed to be and who I'm supposed to be. And so I have to make up my mind. Okay, I'm uh, yes, I'm under construction. Yes, I'm a work in progress, but I'm better tomorrow than I was today. Yeah. I'm a better disciple. I, I, I obey him better mm -hmm. tomorrow than I did today. I'm helping others more tomorrow than I did today. I, I'm being kinder with my, whatever it may, may be. And it can be yeah. a plethora of things, correct? But I think when we start really, there is a reason why the thousands followed Jesus. Mm. And it wasn't just signs, wonders, and miracles. Yeah. It was behavior. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was willing to conduct himself in a manner that made people feel comfortable and wanted to be around him. Right. And I think if we can master that, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the way we master it is just find out what he did, find out what he said, and then duplicate it. Yeah. And then people will enjoy it. They'll, they'll, they'll like coming to church instead of yeah, running yeah. away from the church. Yeah. You know, but it starts with that, you know, taking God out into the world. Mm -hmm. And when they really experience him at school, because you're being the image of Christ, when they really experience him at work, now they'll follow you to church yeah. because all those personas and preconceived ideas of how hypocritical are and how mean and how rude and how cutthroat Christians are, they all go to the wayside when they see you being a true disciple yeah. and follower of Jesus Christ. I think uh, one thing that it would be <clears throat> helpful for a lot of people is to understand, like, it's not my job to change the atmosphere of a school, mm. but I can control my own atmosphere within the school, right. and I can bring people into that atmosphere. Mm. And I think that that's what Jesus was very good at, is yeah. that he was going into these places with these, mm. quote-unquote, people of the night and the sinners and all these things, but he created an atmosphere to where he said, I'm here for you. Yep. You know, and yeah, yeah. he established this level of love 
and compassion and trust. And then when he was able to actually have conversation with them, like like Zacchaeus, like we have no idea what was said in that house, right. you know. But Zacchaeus, because of Jesus bringing an atmosphere of love and trust into Zacchaeus' home, yeah. it called him to change. Yeah. It motivated him to change. And he immediately realized, I've got to change some things yeah. so I can follow after this guy, so I can be in relationship with this guy. And that's what's so beautiful and so amazing is that hopefully through the trust and love and yep. the atmosphere that Jesus creates, it should motivate you to want to pick up that cross daily. Yeah, and he never let those atmospheres around him change his atmosphere. Exactly. Anybody that was brought into the orbit of Jesus and brought into the orbit of his atmosphere, they changed, yeah. he didn't change. Exactly. And it was important for us to understand that, even with Zacchaeus, that's a starting point, right? He went mm-hmm. to find him, and you know he climbed up that tree or whatever, so that desire was there for sure. change. Yeah, he yeah. was pursuing that. But I think we have to be careful when we're at school and we've got this atmosphere of love, or we've got this atmosphere of peace, or we've got this atmosphere of joy, when all these meteors <laughs> of toxicity <laughs> yeah, <you> are <laughs> flying into our atmosphere, and we've got this and that and that, that we don't let it corrupt mm-hmm. our ozone or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Let our atmosphere be... Impenetrable. Ooh, yeah, big word. And let it, and let anyone who comes into that orbit experience your atmosphere. So good. You know, I've been, we've been saying it for a while that culture doesn't change the church, but the church changes culture, and mm. that's one way you do it. I'm not going to let all this exterior stuff affect this atmosphere that I have in my life, and but instead, I'm going to let this atmosphere infect everybody else around me. I like it. And so, infect. just hold true. Yeah, right. In That's fact. A, in fact, is that the right word? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Let Jesus be a disease no, that gosh. cures the world. <laughs> That's such an oxymoron. <laughs> That's so good. But but anyways, just you know, love God with all that's the greatest commandment, right? Yeah. Love God with all of your heart. Let's not be fake. Let's not be put on. Let's not be any of that. Let us be authentic. Let us be genuine in our love for him. And when we're genuine in our love for him, that will be displayed because we want our lives to be pleasing to him. Mm. And when our lives are pleasing to him, I promise it will change the atmosphere around us because we've changed our own atmosphere. Super good. So we yeah. got you guys a little good nugget today. Uh, that really wasn't our plan. No, it came but it's out. great. It's awesome. Yeah. Really why we're here today is to let you know we're taking a break. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be a very short break. Uh, this is officially episode 52. One of year. Good talk. Wow. We have been good talking for one whole year. Look at year. us. Praise God. It's been, been quite a cool year, man. Yeah, I've been, it's been, been, been fun. I've been really enjoying it. Um, but we, we still wanted to bring you something. Uh, I, we, got, I gave you, we gave you a little more than I even thought we were going to yeah. give you. So that's awesome. That's great. I believe that that's going to bless you. And it's going to inspire you because this is what's going to happen. We're going to come back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really know what's going to happen. But I, I do know this. I love like, it. I'm uh, coming back as Thor. <laughs> There, I don't know, man. I, I, I believe it, and we've been praying on it, and we've been seeking after it. But, man, we're just something. There's going to be a change. There's going to be hey, a turn let's uh, go. in our youth ministry, yes, in our personal lives, in Cornerstone. Like, yes, sir. I, I mean, so when we hit back in August, like, I'm I'm believing for some greater conversations, yeah. some greater revelations. So we're going to come Incredible. back. As I don't know. We haven't had a hard yeah, press yeah. date yet. So it's either going to be August 1st or, or it's going to be 8th. August 8th mm-hmm. at 6 a.m. So uh, it'll be one of those days, but we will for sure get you an exact date soon probably yeah. maybe by the time we post this you'll actually know and we right. can let you know but it, that is the plan in august we're coming back with a vengeance season two of the good talk season two be sure to follow us on our socials because yes. we'll be dropping it on socials yep. on instagram our personal ones probably our ablaze one we'll, we'll, we'll let you know when season two is about to season start but two. we're excited for it yeah so and here's some things that maybe you can be doing in these this time off or because this is going to air probably roughly a week or two before so yeah i, I I believe and pray that, you know, we are bringing good Christian doctrine and message to the things that are happening in this Mm. world, but we also want to talk about things that are happening in your life or things that you've got questions about or things that, or maybe there's people that you know personally, you want to see on the podcast. I don't know. Let's try to get people on. Let's try to get some guests on here. Let's hear some perspectives. Here's some things. So if you have like topics, you got questions or, or maybe you've got challenges, we want to hear about it. We want to talk about it. So if you want to come on the podcast, don't be like, well, Lord, just tell them. No, you tell us, let let us know that you want to come on. And when we decline it, don't get mad. I mean, we, 
would love to be able to shoot you down and say, no, you can't come. No, I'm no, just teasing. You know the, the, how the drill is. We want anybody to come out here. Come on down. We'll yeah, bring it over I, here. I mean, I'm not holding my breath. Surely, I guess, you know, Machine Kelly's not coming. Johnny Depp's <laughs> not coming. Chris Hemsworth. I mean, we've put all these invitations out there. Pastor Michael Todd. We've, we've extended it to a – it's not – because Cody and I have not invited people. <laughs> so, so, but come on, we'll have fun. It'll be great. All right. So, we love you guys. Yes, we it's true. We are excited for what is to come. Yes, and it's we true. will see you again. Er, well, I th- okay, either you'll be on YouTube and you will see us again. We won't really see you again. Um, or you will hear from us again on the podcast. So, that we, too is true. Yeah. So see you guys soon. Hear from you. Hear he, hear from us soon. It's <laughs> a great way to end it. I like it. Hear from me. <laughs> hear from me soon. We love you guys so much. We'll see you guys on the next one in season two. <gasps> Bye. Season two.